Okay. Um, if you notice that in in the models in the textbook, uh, there's an epsilon um, in the uh, multiply mo models, and if you recall, you will also have this epsilon in the invariant models in the object function. In the invariant models, um, this epsilon implies that you should solve the um, the invariant model uh, in the two-stage process. Now here, um, what this um, what does this mean is that um, actually this epsilon forces all the multipliers um, are greater than zero, so the multipliers cannot take um, zero values. Zero values. Um, usually in the calculation, uh, this epsilon is a very very small number. Um, so just you know want to make sure you want to make sure that the, the weights that you get are positive. Um, now you may ask, what if I get a, a solve a problem and and I don't have that that epsilon in place. And you know, you cannot set in the LP. You cannot set the the weights or the multipliers. In this in this case, they are decision variables. You cannot set the decision variable that is positive. Right? You can only set them as non-negative. So the one way, to, the only way to set up set them um, uh, positive is to add a very small um, positive number, so then so that they they are greater than um, zero. Now, if you don't have that in place, uh, you may have an efficiency score, and you may have um, some weights are actually zero. Um, one uh, problem um, f to, to that is um, people will say, "Okay, now since the weights are for some inputs and the outputs are zero, you are actually not evaluate this particular DMU." Um, over all the inputs and outputs, because you know if its weight is zero, that's that's not considered. Um, the the reason to that is actually twofold. One is um, even you know when you solve a uh, DEM model and you solve for a, a a particular units and you get an efficiency score and some weights are zero. Um, even some of the weights are zero because uh, you actually have multiple optimal solutions. What does this mean that? Also, you may have a set of weights that uh, that is um, um, not positive. I mean, I mean they uh, zero. You may be able to find that some other weights that are positive still give you the uh, same efficiency scores. This is what we call the multiple optimal solutions. Um, in fact, um, if you run your spreadsheet model and run a couple of times for one particular DMUs. Um, Depending on the initial value that you put into those decision cells, you may be able to get a different set of um, multipliers, the optimal multipliers. Uh, of course, the 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 efficiency score should always be the uh, the same. Um, so that's why uh, people added this 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 epsilon in it. Uh, but again, this epsilon is depending on the data that you use. Um, you know, if if the data that you have is very small, and you have to use a really real small um, small number, um, what this also what this uh, epsilon implies is that if um, you have a DMU, the efficiency score is equal to one, and you um, did not set uh, the epsilon value, and so you actually you set epsilon as zero. So in a sense, in this case, you still can have um, zero. Optimal weights, or optimal multipliers. Um, you may have still have slacks. Or it's a weakly efficient uh, the efficient. So if you think about the relationship between uh, non-zero slacks that we've talked about in the invariant models, um, the uh, the epsilon here. Uh, if you set the epsilon um, here uh, uh, in the multiplier model, basically you want make you want to make sure that all the weights are positive, and you don't have any any snacks. Okay, so, but I would still recommend you uh, to not choose a value for epsilon because if you run it, um, sometimes you get a message that says the you don't have a feasible solution. That's only because you choose the wrong type of the epsilon. Now, of course, if you choose a big um, big epsilon, um, the efficiency scores. Um, or will be will be changed, so um, it's it's a, a difficult um, process to to select the uh, the epsilon. Okay, um, but in 
a different type of model where we we're going to discuss um, them in this this slides this set of slides is called the assurance region models okay you can actually use that to to avoid um, to choose a particular uh, value for the epsilon so I suggest that you only set the epsilon is equal to zero